please. Okay, okay. Hello, everyone. First of all, let me let me thank Miguel, Irene, and Kumbin for organizing this and for giving me the opportunity to be here. I think it's very nice that we have these open mic discussions, but it's not always about seminars. It's nice to discuss to have the opinion of other people. And today, I want to quickly introduce this topic about dynamical coworkings to nothing. And um, first, let me start with the with the coworkism conjecture. Coworkism conjecture is telling us that essentially the coworkism group in quantum gravity should be zero. This meaning that, for example, if I go to what I, I'm going to call the quantum gravity perspective, I hope it's going to be clearer later. I have I can have this quantum gravity background which is compact, and I mean quantum gravity background because it's not only the background. I can have here, for instance, this is with a different color because I can have some flags here. These can be have some black brains, you know. And what this is meaning is that there should be another background that is shrinking everything to zero. It is going to nothing. Now, if I go to the effective field theory perspective, this means that if I have the space time that I get from taking spin theory and compactifying this compact background, then it is topologically allowed that this goes to nothing. So basically, there has to be some quantum gravity uh, background which is connecting this vacuum here to nothing. And this was, for instance, used in this paper uh, to argue that there should be no topological obstruction for building bubbles of nothing for any kind of vacuum in spin theory. Now, of course, the question about this bubble really nucleating and expanding is a different question. But now we want to, to ask how this coordination to nothing happened dynamically, meaning that what, is, what are the features of this background that is connecting the vacuum to nothing? Now, again, if I go to the quantum gravity perspective, this is easy. The only thing that I'm doing is that I'm taking my compact manifold here for make it easy. It is going to be just a cycle. And I have this radial coordinate and the cycle is shrinking to zero. Something important about this background, actually, this is sort of like Beaton's double of nothing, is that this is nice and smooth. If you look at it as a 5D background, higher dimensional background, this is smooth. There is nothing wrong going here. Now, if I go to the previous part and I go again to the effective field theory perspective, what I have is that I no longer have this radius here. And what I have is only the radial coordinate. But now if I come here, I see that my radial coordinate is empty. And actually I have what we call an end of the world. Because if I now look close here, what I find is that this is nothing but smooth because I have a singularity here. And for instance, the, the scalar curvature is blown up. So this is a disaster. And everybody will say, okay, so why, why would you do that? Because I mean, if I go from this perspective to the effective field theory perspective, it seems crazy because you are taking this circle, there is no scale separation, and you are just getting rid of it. It's not like a compactification, it's rather a, just a consistent fraction. However, if you look from the other way around, if you start with the EFT perspective and you go to the quantum gravity one, what you are showing is that you have some EFT with some solution that has some very nasty singularity and that quantum gravity is solving it for you because the internal geometry is resolving the singularity. And then I think this motivates to do a bottom-up approach as one plan and to take this TFT perspective and try to build this kind of running solutions that are covered this to nothing that are ending in this kind of other, of another world. Because if you analyze how they are bad, you can maybe uh, learn something about how they can be solved in quantum gravity. So essentially, the picture is sort of like this. It's that quantum gravity saves the day because in the effective field theory perspective, these cover distance to nothing are running solutions that are suddenly ending up in the end of the world. And this is bad because the EFT park is breaking down. Everybody is screaming and this is bad. But then we hope that quantum gravity woman will come, will save the day for us. And at the end, we will have a nice uh, solution that interpolates from the vacuum to nothing with no, with no pathology. And um, by the way, if you want to know how to do these very nice pictures, please don't ask me, ask Matilda, because I didn't do them. So thanks for them, Matilda. Um, okay, so let me, let me come back to this end of the world picture, and we want to analyze this in a more bottom-up perspective. So first of all, you can realize that these kind of solutions are no, not avoidable when you have dynamical platforms. This was realized here. And essentially, the logic is that if you have a dynamical platform, then you have some scale ups with some potential that has no minimum. And therefore, the solution is just forced to run and run and run and run and run until it hits some disaster, in this case, the end of the world. Then you can also focus in this region here, and you can realize that in most of the examples, the, the scalar fields are exploring infinite distance. 
this was realized here. And whenever you have something that is exploding in infinite distance, automatically you have the ring telling you that you can find, you can try to find relations to distance conjectures. So then it was put forward this conjecture, the cover distance distance conjecture, saying that maybe one can explore all this infinite distance uh, by means of this kind of running solution. And then one can try to learn how they are solving quantum gravity, and you can try to learn about quantum gravity using them, using these kind of singularities, this, this end of the world. Uh, Jose, uh, could I ask a quick question? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, so you say all infinite field distance limits in quantum gravity can be explored in this way, uh, like with a, with a covered distance domain world to, uh, right? Like the, the space time ends. Yeah, mm -hmm. What is the example of this for, let's say, the compactification limit? Like I can see it for compactification, right? For the compactification. Yes, yes, yes. So I think, I mean, I don't have the solution, let's say, but I think it will be something really similar to this. But instead of having it going to zero, some type of hyperbola, you know? I'm not really sure if you can really build them. But the good thing about this effective theory perspective is that you don't really know if you have a decompactification, an emerging street limit, a shrinking cycle, you just don't know. It would be so something for the, the, right, the, the t dual to bubble of nothing or something like that. Exactly. And I'm not really sure how to build it. But from my perspective, I mean, naively, it will be something like this side here blowing infinity, finite distance. So, okay. so just to make sure, just to make sure, how do you think about M theory case, the Hojava Witten wall? Sorry, can you repeat? How do you think about the Hojava Witten wall case? Ah, that's a good question. So in this case, this case is something really particular from our perspective because you don't really have a scalar there. So it yeah. would be a different, yeah, essentially, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not trying to say that you will have uh, always a scalar and you will always oh, have okay. a kind of solution. I mean, like, if you have a scalar, I think you can always explode it in this kind of solutions. Well, for even in type one prime, which is t dual to it, sometimes you don't, it doesn't go up. So sometimes it doesn't go to zero. You mean the, it doesn't go to zero, the, the, the size, you mean? If, so for type one prime, for example, uh -huh. I'm assuming you mean the coupling constant of the type type one theory, type one prime, type one theory, type two A theory. So in that case, if you get, uh, for, some, for some brains at the boundary, it goes up, but for some others, it doesn't. Yes, yes. I don't think that in any kind of boundary that you can put, it will go to infinity. Right, for but some of them. So this ex exponential growth that you are mentioning is only specific to some cases. Yeah, it is related to the cases that we will call the over to nothing, the, 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 the end of the world, that are essentially that these, uh, that these fields are going to infinity in finite distance. Um, okay, so this, this, this is a subclass, in other words. Yeah, matter of that. Uh, yeah, so I think I think what you may be referring to, Kunlun, is, the, is, for example, if you have a massive 2 a setting, then you really have a running, right, of the diloton, and eventually uh, the solution will shrink, well, will have a singularity, even if there's no compact space, but truly in this case. But we argue that um, at this point, you know, there should be an O8 to smooth out the singularity, right? Well, um, I'm just talking about the compact example, like interval. In, so in, in the interval, it doesn't have anything. You're saying that um, you don't necessarily need to have the uh, to have the the singularity within the interval. Yeah, you don't. Well, so we're saying I think that if you hit the singularity within the interval, then it should be smoothed out by the the okay. the, the so OH and it's the fine if you are talking about the specific subset, as long as we are clear that you're talking yeah. about subset cases. That's that's, that's accurate. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, okay, similar to, to Carmen's question. Um, yes. Just can I clarify the, the logic? Um, maybe on the next slide, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. So is the logic that suppose that you have a running solution for some scalar, and suppose that the scalar goes to infinite distance, then you're claiming that there's an end, uh, some end of the world domain wall that, that resolves the singularity. The logic doesn't go the other way. Okay. Well, I think the the cobordism distance conjecture is saying that um, 
if you had a uh, uh, cobordism's effect, then you could realize it in some EFT that there is some running that goes towards this cobordism's effect. But you know, we are focusing, well, we have been focusing mostly on the bottom up perspective, right? So we're only looking at the EFT and, and then it only works in the way that, that you described. So uh, the field blows up at finite distance and this must be resolved in quantum gravity with a defect. That's that's why I'm confused. I think that's similar to Cameron's question. So, for example, take take type. Um, I could say M theory, but let me say type two A, so that we can agree that we're in an EFT framework. M theory, maybe you say everything's Planckian, so there's no EFT. Um, type two A, of course, ends on an O eight um, an O eight plane, and mm -hmm. there's no running scalar there. So I don't think it's possibly true that for every cobordism defect, there's a running scalar. But it might be true that every time you have a running scalar such that the scalar runs to infinity, then there is an associated cobordism defect. Is that, is that the... the yeah, exactly. exactly. So, I mean, from my perspective, essentially, imagine that you have a effective field theory, you have some modular space or a space of a scalar because you have some potential. Then what we are arguing is that any infinite field distance limit that you may have in this effective field theory will give you these kind of solutions that are singular, that are pathological. And then by the cobordism conjecture, there should be a way in which quantum gravity is solving it to something smooth the await, some internal geometry is ranking, and at the end, everything is fine, essentially. I see. Thanks. Yeah. But I totally agree, and that's something, uh, an important point to make, that it is not true that in all competitions to Nazi, you will have a running. Yeah, indeed, because you have a plethora of examples in this. That's not true, indeed. Uh, so, yeah, coming back, Wait, can uh, I essentially... Can also ask a quick question? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, namely, on, on the right-hand side of your picture, is it clear that you have a EFT? Because um, I would imagine that, I mean, in particular, if you have a have a geometry with a shrinking cycles or something like that, it's it's not evident that you always have effective description. I, for example, remember that in your papers you also take the example of a klebanov strassler geometry, and I think there, for example, you have a, a five-dimensional, one-dimensional uh, consistent truncation where you can solve the 10 dimensional equations of motions in the five or one dimensional picture. But it's not clear to me whether this is really effective uh, description in the sense that you have like all relevant low energy modes. Yeah, absolutely. So coming back to this, to this picture, if you look at this and you insist on getting rid of this circle, the first thing that you will learn is that for instance, since this geometry actually in five dimensions can be that flat, the rich scalar along this dimension it's, a, it's actually totally linked to the kinetic energy of the radius. So there is no separation of scales by any means. Yeah. So indeed, whenever you talk about the effective field theory perspective for this kind of solutions, basically you lose control of your effective field theory. Now, the picture that we want to point out is that imagine that I care about the bottom mass perspective. I don't know that there is a completion. I only have my effective field theory. Then I don't know what is even the regime of validity actually, only for the Planck scale. Then what we are trying to argue is that once you build these kind of solutions, then you can try to learn how everything breaks down here to see how you can fix it. But of course, the effective field theory is more like a consistent truncation, let's call it. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. Yes. So, yeah, so essentially we, we looked at many I mean, examples and we showed that for many cases, not all of them, you basically find some scalar running to infinite distance, and we try to check for some relation for the distance conjecture. And then what we saw in all the examples is that indeed there is some universal scalar relation in how the rich scalar is blowing up with the distance, and how the distance to the end to the end of the world is also behaving with the field distance, with some delta x, which is order one in Planck unit, and actually those two being related in all the examples we checked. And we check this in a plethora of string theory examples. And actually, in some of them, you can actually see how is this ultraviolet resolution that, as has been already mentioned, not always is a, a internal geometry that is falling down. Maybe you can have some uh, other kind of uh, a brain, something that is uh, absorbing some flux. And also, in, in the last paper, we also have some local EFT analysis in which we check why Einstein gravity likes this scaling, essentially, which meaning that we are dealing with Einstein gravity plus the scalar. Um, and we found some intriguing relation to having exponential, uh, exponential potential and therefore some maybe tantalizing link, link to the distance conjecture. 
Okay, so is this a discussion? Of course, let me end up with a couple of open questions. Um, first, I would really like, I think it's very hard actually, but I would really like to classify the different ways in which the singularity can be resolved in quantum gravity. Uh, you know, like, you know that there is more than one way, but how many of them, how do they work? For instance, in string theory. Also, is there any imprint in the effective field theory? Because quantum gravity uh, fixing the, quant the, the, the end of the world must have some imprint. For instance, if you think about the bubble of nothing, you are discovering a new dimension. So there has to be some relation with KK tower. So one could hope to argue that there must be some tower at a distance conjecture in order to fix this singularity. Also, is there any bottom-up rationale for the common vision distance conjecture and the universal scale relations? And can we relate this to the distance conjecture and asymptotic limits in a more profound way? And yeah, with this, thanks for your attention and thanks to discuss. Just like.